You know, sometimes, this is the fun thing about music, is sometimes they label it and can work with different things, like it's BBC music and rhythmic underscores, but it can work really well with an action movie or Indiana Jones um, type thing. Okay. So, I'm kind of curious as to what in the garden sounds like. Latino in a way. Like, I don't know, I could picture people like going some kind of salsa to it. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's how I like to go. I like to go to new releases and do that. But I mean, figure out, just type the word vibe and see what comes up. Um, things to look for is often I'll look at the waveforms because if you're doing, like, picking a song, you kind of know or probably have a general idea of what you're looking for in terms of pace. If you're like, okay, I need something with a slow build. Um, you know, you can kind of click through, so I'm going to go back to the rhythmic underscores here. Um, you know, when you click on it, it brings up the score immediately, and you can kind of tell, like, if the song's repetitive, if you're looking for something repetitive, if all the waveforms look like they repeat, it's a repetitive song. Um, whereas if they vary, like this guy, you can tell it kind of builds, and here's the high point of it, so it's going to sound different here. And then earlier, yeah, when I clicked on something, I think it was this one, where I was like, oh, that's a slow build. I don't want to have us listen to that entire slow build over there. Um, maybe you can cut through to there and see what it sounds like. Um, so kind of looking at the waveforms, um, honestly, music is so powerful in storytelling. And we have moved the ethics lecture back. I usually cover ethics with the news, but um, since we have to get through so much content in less time, I'm going to do ethics later in the semester. Uh, but, you know, music is not really allowed in news because of how it impacts people's emotions and tells them, you know, subconsciously tells them how to think and feel about a piece. So something fun that I like to do, especially if I'm really indecisive, I'm like, I have no idea what music to put in this piece. I'll get something really high energy and something more mellow, and like go from like, rock to cinematic music, and throw them one on, and then throw the next one on, and see how it completely changes the mood of it. You know, somebody could be saying something slightly, like, slightly grim, and be like, oh, that's kind of depressing, but if you put, some, like, moderately perky music in me, if you don't want to be too contrasting, it can make it sound like they're talking in a more optimistic way. Or make something neutral sound really sad, depending on the music. Um, so really think about the theme you're trying to progress. Sometimes you need multiple songs in a video. Sometimes you want to start with something sad because it is sad and then it builds to something happy. Or in the Visit for Collins, if you want to start with something high energy for the action scenes, for the biking, for all that. And then if you want to go to the kids playing at the end, that may require different music. And that's okay. But download a bunch and throw it on your timeline. You know, I like to have Premiere Pro pulled up while I'm looking for music because I'll probably download three, four songs at least, and then like see which ones sound better. It's very rare that I just throw one on and I'm like, that's it. I had a one moment like that this weekend where I was looking for a song for a video, and I was like, oh, this is actually perfect, but for the most part, you're gonna need a couple. Okay, any other, any questions about sourcing music? Um, things to add, suggestions, tips? Well, let's talk about legal editing. Um, um, I'm just gonna move this stuff down. Okay, so legal editing. Um, so basically, we're talking about copyright for the most part today and sourcing stuff. So in theme with that taking music and not breaking the law, uh, that is what we're going to do. So who here has been through some type of copyright lecture in another class before? And they're in 211 or anywhere? Okay, so about half of you, just about half of you have. Uh, some of this is going to be recap, some of it is not, because obviously I have more specific to video here. And honestly, it's one of the things that I feel like I can't learn enough about this. And I, I will sometimes watch the same video over and over myself to really make sure I understand it or when that topic arises again. 
Let me have her to hang in there. Um, this is important stuff. Like this is, you know, going to keep you out of trouble. So my disclaimer I always have is, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a video instructor. But I, you know, thought this, had to research this, learned it in school, and have to deal with it um, in creating videos. Um, so, you know, when it comes down to it, when you are a professional in this industry, maybe you're a freelancer working for a company, you definitely want to at least have an awareness or have uh, an attorney on your radar um, if something does happen. We're going to talk away about ways to protect, it, protect yourself. But because Jesse, my video instructor, said so, doesn't hold up in court. So just keep that in mind. Um, let me see. I'm fact check everything um, I give you and do a lot of research ahead of time. It can be the best information possible. So, copyright in a nutshell. Copyright, copyright can be so annoying. So, like, earlier I had a student who had to take down notice on one of their videos, and they're like, it's frustrating. It's annoying. It's something you have to deal with. But at the end of the day, um, remind yourself that it protects you. So when you're looking for music and you're like, crap, I really just want to use, um, like, favorite Led Zeppelin song or whatever in this because it would go perfect and it's frustrating. Um, just remember that these laws were made to protect creators and as a creator you'd be really bummed out if um, somebody took your work you, and used it and claimed it as their own and took money out of your pocket and we're making money off of something that you spent a lot of time working on. So, and at the end of the day, they're not just stealing the hours from you that you spent on that one project. Because we all know we spend hours on every single project. They're stealing your education. Because you spent how much money to go to school, and how, many time, how much time in classes to learn um, all this knowledge, and now you put these skills to work so you can finally make money off of it, and somebody takes it and uses that. They're taking money out of your pocket. So at the end of the day, it is um, made to protect creators, so if anything, then not. No thumb, if you didn't make it, check. You need to double check. If this was not something that you pushed the record button on, you need to make sure that you're allowed to use it. Um, and in some instances, if you did hit the record button, if there's music playing in the background, that's subject to copyright too. If somebody's doing a performance, whether that be dancing and a choreography, because choreographies are copyrighted too, and you don't have permission, um, that can still be copyright infringement. That is something to be aware of. Uh, in this class, I ask that before you share anything online publicly, that you just consult me, even if it's like you know, a year or two or even longer down the road and you want to use something as a video example, just pop me an email and be like, hey, this footage, um, what other rights are on this? Because we've got like different agreements for the different footage and some things we're 100% allowed to use and most of the stuff, especially towards the end of the semester, I make sure that you have the ability to distribute everything. Um, because you want to be able to put your work on the internet and try to get a job using this as an example. Um, but sometimes you have to credit um, people and sometimes you don't. Uh, so in this one, yeah, make sure that everything's okay before you get here. But there are some instances where you wouldn't have to get permission from a copyright holder. That's called fair use. It's basically the loophole of copyright. But at the end of the day, this whole lecture and every copyright comes down to money. Is if you take money out of somebody else's pocket, pocket and basically infringe on their ability to make money off of their work, people tend to get upset. Uh, so that is what this is about. Money makes the world go around. So uh, this is, I really like to show this video because it breaks down copyright and fair use really quickly. And short. So I do show this in 211 as well. Um, but I mean, I still don't get tired of watching this guy. It's a short one. In today's digital world, it's easier than ever to copy, paste, mash up, remix, download, and publish content. People's writing, artwork, videos, and images can be inspiring, but they're also easy to take without thinking twice. When people treat the internet like a free-for-all, legal and ethical situations can arise. That's why it's important to know about copyright and fair use. It will help you give and receive credit where credit is due. So what's a copyright? Copyright law protects your control over the creative work you make. It requires people to get your permission before they copy, rework, or share what you make. 
most things that you find, download, and copy and paste from the internet are copyrighted. That doesn't mean that everything online is on lockdown and can't be used. It can. As long as you check who owns it, get permission to use it, give credit to the creator, buy it if necessary, and use it responsibly, then you're not stealing. Now, there are times when you can use a small part of someone else's copyrighted work without permission or paying a fee. This is called fair use. Fair use only applies when using content in certain instances. Schoolwork and education, news reporting, criticizing or commenting, and comedy or parody. Specific guidelines, what we call the four points of fair use, must also be followed. First, you can only use a small amount of the work. Second, you have to add new meaning to the work to make it original. Third, you need to rework it and use it in a totally different way. Finally, you have to use it for nonprofit purposes. In other words, you can't make money off of your new creation. No matter what, it's a good idea to give credit to the creator of the work you use. It's just a sign of respect. So what should you do if you find something online that you want to use? As a rule of thumb, check who owns it, get permission to use it, give credit to the creator, buy it if necessary, and use it responsibly, which means judging for fair use. You're a creator, innovator, and inspirer. Think twice about your rights and responsibilities in our online culture, and then pay it forward. One thing about this video is they say for nonprofit purposes only. So news reporting, obviously reporters get paid. Um, so and that is part of fair use. That's how our news reporters are allowed to use a lot of stuff um, that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do because news reporting falls under that. So that is the one thing that I want to point out about that video. So another source, um, I really like YouTube's copyright um, explanations and things. So, they have a ton of support on, um, on YouTube. Sometimes it's a little challenging to find, but here you can go to learn what is copyright on YouTube, um, can I use copyright protected work, and they have really good videos that they update like probably every other year. They put a new video up there with the latest laws um, about what is, how do I do this? Um, can YouTube determine it? If I have a takedown notice, what do I do here? Um, and let's see, it continues. Um, that's the policy. Bit of comments for use. Um, so, and they have videos explaining it, and they just do a really good job. So often you can refer to their um, and also their takedown notices. So basically the one thing to note also is if you're uploading videos to YouTube is that YouTube is not a judge. They're not a lawmaker. They are simply a host platform. So they err on the side of caution to a fault. They will just take your stuff down in a heartbeat. Uh, so they um, well, sometimes unfairly do that. So if you get a takedown notice, you are going to have to either remove the stuff. They've got a really good system for removing stuff. They can point out, hey, from second 10 to 15, you have copyrighted material. Remove this and we'll upload your video automatically. And you can do it in YouTube in their editor. But, or you can demonstrate that it's fair use. However, um, as they say, YouTube doesn't decide what's fair use the courts do. So um, I haven't had a ton of issues. I haven't really had any issues with this personally. Um, but sometimes that can be challenging. I feel like this is for education purposes, I swear. They may just be like, yeah, we're not chanting it, we're just going to take it down anyway. Sometimes Vimeo is better. But they are a great resource nonetheless and break things down super well. Okay, um, the fair use. Okay, I'm going to show one more video on this. He has terrible transitions in here, so for that, I am sorry. But this guy, unlike me, is a lawyer. So, Trayvon the lawyer is not. He talks about music licensing specifically and some of the difficulties that you may run into if you want to use copyrighted songs. So not just copyrighted songs that you pay for access to on first com, but let's say you want to use, um, I don't know, a modern song. If you want to use something by Led Zeppelin, I don't know why Thor Ragnarok has been stuck in my head today. 
Uh, but if you want to use that, you would have to go through a lot of work to get the rights to use it. How do you get permission to use a song in your video or film? Hi, I'm Gordon Firemark, and this is Asked and Answered, where I answer common entertainment law questions so you can take your entertainment industry career and business, or just a hobby, to the next level. So in a previous Ask and Answered session, I talked about fans making cover videos and posting them on YouTube and Facebook. And I explained that when you include a musical composition, even if it's your own recording of the song, in a video or film, you need special permission called a synchronization or sync license from the owners of the copyright in the song. So here's how you get that license. Now it's actually pretty simple conceptually. So you find out who owns the copyright, you submit a request, and then you wait for an approval called a quote. If you agree to pay the required license fee in a written contract that they prepare, that's it, you're done. But in practice, this is a bit more complicated. That's because lots of songs are written by multiple songwriters, collaborators, and each of those songwriters might be represented by a different publishing company, and you need permission from all of them. So you've got to track down all those publishers so you can ask. Now, a good place to start all this is by looking at the liner notes of the recording of the song you're using. But wait, this is the 21st century, I know, and you're probably listening to an MP3 that doesn't come with liner notes. Or on a streaming service, again, no liner notes. So, okay, check out the source where you got the music in question and see if it lists the names of the songwriters and their publishers, and then run a Google search on those companies. Or, just as easily, head over to ASCAP.com and BMI.com and search their repertoire. Then, contact each publisher shown and request the permission for the use you have in mind. And then you wait for the quote and then the license agreement, which you have to read and understand and comply with its terms. And that is how you clear music rights. More work than you thought, huh? That is why TV shows and film production companies have staffers who do this stuff for them. Most shows and films have a music supervisor who helps find the music and identify the owners, and then a lawyer or paralegal or other executive will handle the actual licensing. For a film project or a TV show, now that makes sense, but for your typical YouTube or Facebook video, it's probably overkill. Maybe you're better off using some original music that you wrote or a track from some royalty-free source. So that's it for this session of Ask and Answer. That okay. transition. Um, okay, so point being is, yeah, sometimes it would be complicated to get permission for those things. Sometimes you can, some of them have licensing agreements as well. So, music. Um, so, um, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry. Um, YouTube. Oh, this is new. Anybody use music, YouTube music before? Huh. Is it, oh, so is this like YouTube audio library? Um, it's basically like Spotify. Mm -hmm. Like it's a subscription oh. thing, so like you pay five bucks a month, and I, I pay five bucks a month for it, so I get that and YouTube premium for it, so I don't add so many YouTube videos. Oh, okay. Um, cool. So it's like, it's like a Spotify? Yeah, it's basically, okay. like it, it's, it's basically copying Spotify. Alright, cool. Feeling it. Um, so what I was looking for, and it may take me a second to find this, basically, so YouTube has a list of music. That's the one thing about YouTube, sometimes it bury things. And so, like, every song, pretty much, like, ever, like, in the mainstream, they'll tell you, like, if you can get away with using it in your, um, YouTube video or not. So, um, um, let's see, can I use this song on YouTube? Nope, they don't. I need to find it again. I'll post the link because I'm going to post a bunch of resources after this lecture. Uh, but on YouTube, so they basically like lists. Like, so you can use like Happy by Pharrell Williams and not get a takedown notice because they basically have an agreement with the creators that if they, uh, some people use that video, that song in the video, they can put an ad in front and then, you know, Pharrell gets to make some more money or Universal Music, wherever his um, recording company is. So uh, that's okay. Whereas Prince, like, yeah, as was told, was told Prince becomes the public domain, you're probably never going to be able to use a Prince song without going through the long process of getting the rights and getting a synchronization license for it. 
So there is some resources there, but then you can't make money off of your videos, and it's subject to ads and all these things. Um, and yeah, that may be something that you're not interested in. Another thing I'd like to talk about is royalty-free. So there's a misconception of what royalty-free actually means. So people hear the word royalty-free, they think it means the music is free, and that you don't have to pay for it. But oftentimes you actually have to pay for royalty-free music. So um, royalty-free basically means that you don't have to credit them for every single song that you use, or every time you use it. So the music on our list is royalty-free. Most of the music on Free Music Archive is royalty-free. You don't have to give credit. However, you've still paid to access it. Royalty-free doesn't mean free, and is still subject to copyright. What you're looking for is, um, if you're looking for something that is actually free, you're looking for a Creative Commons license, which is a different thing. So Creative Commons, that's um, Free Music Archive is where the Creative Commons puts their music, but you can have a Creative Commons license with a song anywhere. Um, Archive. So in this one, this is run by Creative Commons. Um, God, this ad for Epidemic Sound gets me every time. Uh, and you can search through that. So here they even have like a pro subscription now, but you can search through. And this is basically, um, why did they kill it? No, please don't tell me. Yeah. So basically, artists have put us up there and been like, hey, you can use my music for free. However, they may be a caveat, so you may you just need to check and see what the license is. And like this person says, okay, Checky Brown is under a non-commercial, no derivatives license. So you can share and copy, you can use it, you just can't make money of it, um, and you can't remix it. So even if you cut a loop out of the song, you can't use it. There's a lot of them that are like, cool, you can use it, you don't even have to credit me, you just have it. I just want have this music that I'd like to get out there. Um, they will have different licenses, but you don't pay for it. So it's a Creative Commons license, and there's various different ones. So if you wanted to get your work out there, that'd be something that you could look into, is getting a Creative Commons license. Uh, so that's, yeah, royalty free doesn't mean that you don't have to pay for it, and that you don't have to credit the author. Um, sometimes you just have to credit once. Uh, most, but, if you're going to do this professionally, again, highly recommend paying for a service, doing some research on what service you choose to pay for. Okay, that has some music. I'm going to talk briefly about some stock footage. So, um, you may want to use other footage that you can shoot yourself. Um, if you need a shot of, I don't know, the... Broncos Stadium, and you're not in Denver, or if you need a shot of the Apollo Theater, which is what I needed this week, and I'm not going to go to the Apollo Theater and get a shot there. And then hunting through Google and trying to figure out the rights and how to get the rights to those images can be a big time in the butt. Or finding something that's pay per use, so like every time you use it, um, you don't have to pay for it. And it's not fair use. So, my favorite source um, for the looking for footage, is Storyblocks. So has anybody here used Storyblocks before? Okay, cool. So um, the reason that this is so awesome is that it's relatively inexpensive. And you want to look at the different plans, the different pricing, um, and for what you get, this is super cheap. And you definitely want to read the fine print for things like this, because you don't want to ruin your reputation, or look, God forbid you make a video for a client and they end up getting sued for it, you're, yeah, it's gonna be an absolute nightmare. So you wanna make sure that you are good, that everything is 100% royalty free and you can use it forever, and they have epic stuff. So what do they need? And uh, let's say, searches I've done a lot lately are music venues. And they have amazing like 4K footage of a bunch of different things. They have graphics, and even, I actually needed this exact shot a while ago, um, and really high quality stuff. And like for 20 bucks a month, you can pull whatever you want out of here. You can make entire videos from this. Like you could say, ocean. If you were using or like primarily your own footage was 1080, for example, do you think it looks strange to have something 4K in with it or no? Um, it depends. 
depends on like a lot of things, honestly. Um, I mean, you can when you put a 4K shot and you export it as 1080, it exports as 1080. So, um, and chances are you're going to be exporting as that. So it's going to render down. Um, however, like 4K cameras tend to have better sensors in them. So if you are using a different camera, that you know the sensitivity of the camera may have like produced different colors in a different range. So if it's the same camera, once you've exported it down, um, usually it's okay. So if I have a camera that has 4K, but I don't always want to use 4K for this class, so it's like way too much and I already have storage issues, I can export that as 1080? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's kind of like what we went over in the um, tech assignment, is like using all those different footage, like different types of footage. Um, and you can take 4K and you can put it with 720 shots and you can export them down so that they're similar qualities. Um, so yeah, honestly, I, I do that with almost every single project is there'll be a couple shots in 4K. I like to do interviews in 4K so I can reframe them and not lose resolution. But like if you needed a drone shot of the ocean, like. There's like amazing quality footage here. Um, and sure that's the inexpensive. So they have audio. I've used a ton of their like presets as well for text. They have awesome um, graphic openers uh, and stuff like that. So, da -da -da. Well, it's, I mean, it's really cool stuff for like if you're making like a YouTube style video, like the like the front thing that you'd have that have like a word and be like your like your front page. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like your yeah. like it would have cool stuff for that. Sorry. Yeah, it has some awesome stuff for that, honestly. So like here, and I mean, this stuff can be complicated to make from scratch, but you can have this awesome graphic, you can pay 20 bucks a month, and you can pay for, heck, one month, and get a couple things that you need, um, and use them for your videos. So, um, yeah, I honestly, I used, I put my own footage in this opener for one of the videos I did. So I was pretty excited about that. Um, yeah, so that's just a nice resource because, yeah, finding images on the internet can be really tough um, to use. Yeah. Do you think we could use that, for like, like, let's say for like a visual communication assignment, or no, because we didn't like do it ourselves? Uh, it depends on the parameters of the assignment. So you're taking visual communication with Katie. Um, I would consult her because um, when I teach the class, I allow legally sourced stuff. Like, you can't, um, are you talking about for a poster or for the video? For the video, the first video assignment, because I'm doing like a commercial and I was going to do something with like, I wanted like a split screen or whatever, so like someone drinking a different can of soda in one and someone drinking like a different flavor in the other, but like split screen is kind of like hard and I would have to like teach myself. And like that one kind of looked like it had like a split screen already made. Yeah, honestly a split screen is really easy once you've done it, like you just move it. Um, that's a really simple one. It would, it's honestly, it would be more work to download a template and figure out how to use the preset than if you oh. need to do a split screen from scratch. Okay. But like in that example, as long as like for the, the rule of thumb that I use for that assignment is like cool if it's not a significant portion and you just have like a few shots you want to supplement, I'm cool with it. If it better tells your story because at the end of the day, that's what I care about is storytelling, and that you've created most of it from yourself and you're supplementing. Just I would double check with her since it is um, her thing. Okay. But yeah, um, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite resources. I've only kind of dug into it more recently and wish I'd been digging into it a lot more. Um, but yeah, always read the fine print, make sure you know what you paid for and you know what you're getting with the license that you have. And that you're honest, like, if you're sending it stuff out and you're like, cool, I shot and edited everything myself, um, you know, you might want to be, like, put a copy and be like, okay, most of, almost everything shot and edited with the exception, uh, exception of a few shots. As long as you're not lying, like, if you lie, you're going to get caught out. Um, but it's totally legal. Producers do this all the time. Okay, so that's the one resource. So to wrap up this lecture on legality, um, yeah, you get different, um, yeah, you get all these different types of licenses. Do your research. I can spend a whole semester going over different types of licenses and what you can and can't do. Become a relative expert in your own industry. If you're going into sports and you're going into news broadcasting, know exactly how much you can use of another station's footage without like, getting into trouble and understand that agreement. But that knowledge is a waste of brain space for a freelancer. So um, figure out what is going to be useful to you. So the closing tips. I put Steve's closing tips and copy, copyright up, up here as well. I'll go for that in a second. So Steve always says, when in doubt, don't use anything. So he teaches a video production class as well. We co-produce a couple of projects. 
Um, uh, when in doubt, don't use it. Cite your source. Citing your source is not a fail-safe, though. It's not like, oh, I gave them credit. I'm going to be fine. They can still totally sue you. It's not like there's copyright police that are gonna be like, okay, this person, you stole this footage, I'm gonna tell the owner, that's not a thing. But somebody can still sue you and be like, yeah, you cited me, but you didn't pay for it, it's still mine. Our court's gonna be like, at least you weren't trying to just steal it. It does help a little bit. Um, you know, check with your boss. Um, like, they tend to know more about things and have been doing things for longer. But don't, make sure you do your research as well, because you can still be liable if your name is going on the video. My question is, if you're profiting financially from the use of the video, it's going to be scrutinized a lot more. Um, or are you taking away from somebody else's income? Those are Steve's big tips. My big tips are do your research and actually read the fine print of like, what you're allowed to use. If you're going to draw an like, awesome attorney, or go to a lawyer's website and see that. Um, honestly, I've like done stuff like contacted friends of friends who have like a lawyer and have like spoken to them about a few things just to make sure. Um, and just like anything, if you didn't make it, make sure you uh, have the rights to use it. And also be aware if somebody else did something illegal to acquire the footage and your name's gonna be behind, be behind it, be aware of it. So if somebody um, illegally shoots drone footage over a national park, not a lot of fly drones in a national park. Um, so if they did that, you know, if you put that in your video, you'd get into trouble. If somebody breaks into a building or trespasses, this is a more likely story, trespasses to get footage and you use it, you could be in trouble. We talk about ethics of that as well. Okay, any questions on copyright, what music you can use, what footage you can use, all those things. Hey, awesome. Um, I know, I know, guys, this isn't the most exciting thing to talk about. I know um, copyright is not a riveting topic, but it is an important one. Don't you guys get in trouble um, and get takedown notices? <clears throat> if you do run into trouble moving forward, if you use a first comp song and if you get a takedown notice, something like that, let me know um, so we can work through these things. And yeah, like I said, if you want to post something on the internet publicly that you've made in this class, Find me an email and I can tell you what you need to do for those projects. Like, example, um, Edit Stock did the, is where we got the skateboarding documentary stuff that you have to put the Edit Stock logo at the end, but I'd have to like go onto Edit Stock and read the license for that, but it's just double check and you could do that too. Whereas, Visit for Collins, Brian Bush shot it and I helped him with it and I was like, hey, I think this would be a really cool assignment. Um, can we use the footage and if students use it in their work, do you want to be credited? And he's like, no. Students getting jobs is all the things that I want in the world, so help them out, I'm cool with it. So everything's a little different, just double check. Cool. Um, okay, yeah. So for the rest of class, we're going to take a five minute, we'll, go, we'll take a break until three or five, I'm going to go around the room and I'm going to talk to everybody about their script and their plans for the current project. Uh, and yeah, I mean, my, my general comment for everybody is, you know, have some fun with this. Get creative with your music choice. Try different things. For example, the skating one could go really well with anything from classical music to rock and roll of them, like, skating. Or it could simply, you could just tell the documentary and just have very basic, like, ambient music in the background that has a general theme and really not focus on the music at all. You can do it so many different ways. Same with Visible College, you could have high energy music with action stuff, or you know, feel good, kind of softer background, and they could be equally as good videos, just with a different theme, message, vibe, all those things. Um, so yeah, think about those things, we're going to talk about your script individually, and yeah, we'll chat in five minutes, and I'll go around the